Hi guys, this is Kalara Hudson of While They Play Designs, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the long tail tubular cast on, also known as an Italian cast on. So if you take a look at my knitted piece here, you can see that where I've cast on seems to just roll over the edge to the back of my work. Let me get this where you can see it a little better. So you can see I have one by one rib and the knit stitches just appear to roll over to the back of the work. So that's why they call this a tubular cast on. We're going to be creating two rows of double knitting that form a tube before we work our one by one rib. And as you can see, it has a nice stretch to it without losing its shape. So I will be showing you how to work that cast on. Now, just as with a traditional long tail, you're gonna to wanna to take your yarn. We do not need waist yarn for this particular cast on. We will just be using the working yarn for our pattern. So you'll make a tail here, a short tail for your cast on. I'm gonna just cast on probably 13 stitches. So that should be about enough. And then our ball of yarn is here at the top of our work. And instead of creating a slip knot to begin with, to anchor our yarn, we're just going to take our needle, slide it underneath that strand of yarn, and pinch it with our index finger. And then for a long tail, you'll put your thumb and index finger through in between the strands and then secure both strands with your pinky and ring finger. And then you'll make that standard slingshot motion. So in order to anchor this strand of yarn so that it doesn't go anywhere, you'll first wanna determine if you're going to begin with a knit stitch or a purl stitch. For a knit stitch, you'll simply swing behind the top strand and under the bottom strand and then come back up. And that's your knit stitch. And if we twist our work, you can take a look here and you'll just see we have a V sitting on our needle. So that's for a knit stitch. Now for a purl stitch, again, you're gonna go underneath that strand, secure it with your index finger. And for a purl, you're just gonna to swing to the front and then go underneath and behind the top strand and back up. And if you take a look here, you can see that we have a little strand going underneath this loop on our needle which resembles a purl stitch. So if you wanna begin purl one, knit one, you would start this way. And if you wanna start with a knit stitch, which in this case, for this video, we're going to be starting with a knit stitch. So again, I'll go underneath, secure it, and then go behind both strands underneath the front and back up. So there's my knit stitch. Now you'll wanna cinch up your work just like you would with a traditional long tail. And since we began with a knit stitch, I will begin by showing you the purl stitch. So for a purl stitch, you're going to go over that top strand and behind it, under the bottom strand, back up over the top of the bottom, down between the two and behind the top. And then you'll cinch up your working yarn. And if you take a look, you can see that strand going underneath our second stitch looks like a purl. And now we're ready for a knit stitch. For a knit stitch, you're going to take your needle and swing it in front of the bottom strand, back up between the two, and then over and behind the top strand and under the bottom, and then swing back up. And if you look here, you can see we have that little V for our knit stitch. And then each time I create a cast on, I'm just going to cinch my working yarn up for both of these strands. And I'm gonna put that right index finger over the, the strand of yarn so that it doesn't go anywhere, just to secure it. So we just did a knit, now we're ready for a purl. So over and behind the top strand, below the bottom, back up and over the bottom, down between the two, and behind the top. And cinch up your work, there's our purl. So now a knit in front of the bottom, back up between the two, over and behind the top, and below the bottom. Swing back up. So there's our knit. So I'm gonna speed this up a little, 
or purl. Under the bottom strand, down below, back up. Now our knit, back up, over the back, below both, and back up. There's our knit. And then remember to cinch up your work. So now a purl, and a knit. And as you get more comfortable with this motion, you can kind of swing and rotate your left wrist with whatever feels uh, better for you. So we have a purl and a knit. So as you can see, I kind of rotate my right wrist too as I'm working these cast-ons. Okay, so since I began this row with a knit stitch, I want to finish it with a knit stitch just for this piece of work that I'm knitting. So I'll add a knit stitch. Okay, and this last stitch that you cast on is going to be a little loose, as you can see. So in order to secure it, you're just going to want to pull on that tail. If I began, sorry, if I ended, for instance, with a purl stitch, I actually have that strand just laying loosely over the top of your tail. So you would want to just take your tail and give it kind of a twist to anchor that stitch. Now I will be finishing this row, as I said, with a knit stitch, so I'll remove that purl. So there's my last knit stitch. I'm gonna get this tail out of the way. Now I'm gonna turn my work, and I'm just gonna wanna keep hold of that tail. Just make sure that you're holding it nice and tight so that it doesn't come unwrapped on your needle. And in order for this tubular cast on to work properly, we have to do two setup rows in double knitting. That's what's gonna form that, that tubular shape. So in order to do that, we're simply going to knit half of our stitches and slip the other half. So I'll show you how to do that. And I like to just wrap that tail around my pinky just to keep it nice and cinched. So our first stitch is a purl stitch and I'm simply going to put our working yarn in the front, take my needle, and I'm gonna insert it with the yarn in front purl wise through that stitch and I'm just going to slip it off of the left hand needle. Now you'll place your yarn in the back and you'll knit the next stitch. And that's basically your repeat across this first row. So yarn in the front, slip that stitch purl wise, yarn in the back, knit the next stitch. So yarn in the front, slip, yarn in the back, knit. Yarn in the front, slip, yarn in the back, knit. And we're gonna to go to the end of our row, knitting and slipping with the yarn in front. And for the last stitch of this row, I'm simply going to knit it through the back loop. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like to just slip the first stitch of my row to give it a nice clean edge. Okay, so I've turned my work, I've done one row of double knitting, and now I have a second row. And you're simply going to repeat the same thing that you did on the previous row. So with the yarn in the front, I'm going to slip purlwise. And actually my first or my second stitch on the needle is another purl stitch. So I'm going to slip that purl wise with the yarn in front. If you're not slipping the first stitch of your row for your particular pattern, you'll simply knit that stitch. Okay, so I've slipped purl wise with the yarn in front. Now I have my knit stitch, so I can knit that. Next stitch is a purl stitch. So with the yarn in front, you're gonna slip it Yarn in the back, knit the next stitch. Yarn in the front, slip. Yarn in the back, knit. We're just gonna do that across this row. Yarn in the front, slip. Yarn in the back, knit. All the way to the end. So I'm gonna knit that last stitch. Okay, so if you take a look here, 
you can see that little tubular edge beginning to form. So we're done with our two rows of double knitting. Now if you're following a pattern that tells you how many rows of rib to work in, it can get a little confusing to keep track of where your first row is. So I like to just take a locking stitch marker and I like to just find one of the first rows, this little V here in this knit stitch, and I just put that locking stitch marker in and that will tell me where my first row is in my ribbing as I'm counting because it's easy to lose track of that. Okay, so we will turn our work and now that our tubular setup is complete, we can simply begin our one by one rib. So again, I'm just slipping the first stitch of every row just for a nice slip stitch uh, edge. And now I will do a regular knit one, purl one ribbing. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. And again, I'm knitting through the back loop so I can slip the edge stitches. So I will continue in my one by one rib. Okay, so if you take a look here, you can see that I've worked a few rows of regular one by one rib. And this is where it comes in handy to mark that first row. It's kind of hard to tell where your first row is in your work with that tubular edge. So by marking it, you can just count one, two, three, four, five. I've done five rows of my ribbing. Okay, now for two by two rib, you will begin your cast on the same way and you will do two rows of the double knitting. But in order to convert that one by one rib to two by two rib, we need to slip our stitches and reorient them on our needle. So I will show you how to do that. Again, I'm slipping my first stitch of the row. And as you can see, I have a purl stitch next, but I want a knit stitch for my knit two purl two rib. So I will place my needle purl wise through that knit stitch. And then I'm going to pinch the first stitch that skipped, pull both of them off, pick up that purl stitch, place it back on the needle, and then rotate my needle and place the slipped stitch back on the end of the needle. Now I have a knit stitch ready to be worked. So I will knit it, knit two. Now I have purl two on my needle. Okay, and then we need two more knit stitches. So I have a knit and now I have the same problem. I have a purl stitch. So again, I want to place that knit stitch on the right side of the purl stitch so that I will have two knit stitches in a row. So essentially what we're doing is we're doing a one over one right cable. You can use a cable needle for this, but it's just as easy just to insert your needle into the knit stitch, pinch that purl stitch, pull them both off, place the purl back on your left hand needle, and then place your knit stitch on the left hand needle. And then knit that knit stitch, and then we have two purls together. So if we stop and look, we have just dragged that knit stitch over the purl stitch so that we can have our knit stitches lined up in our knit two purl two ribbing. So we'll finish to the end of the row. We need two knit stitches. So again, we're gonna knit. We've got a purl. So we're gonna do that one over one right cable. Like that. There's knit two and then purl two. Knit one, and then we have a purl, so we need to do that right cable again. And obviously you can do this with any number of stitches that happen to be um, divisible by your two by two rib. But that is how you convert the one by one rib to two by two rib. And then you would just continue on knitting knit two purl two.
And I just wanted to take this moment to show you guys why they call this a tubular cast on. So I'm just going to take my working yarn and start removing the regular one by one rib rows. I think I have one more row left before I get to the double knitting. Here we go. So this is the last row of, of regular one by one. So if you look, you can see our cast on is coming apart. But this is what creates that tube. It's almost as if we knitted this piece in the round. But this is what those two rows of double knitting created. A row of stitches that got slipped to the back and then a row that were slipped to the front. And our cast on is right in the center of those. So I just thought that was an interesting way to show you guys what's actually happening with this tubular cast on. So that's how we create the long tail tubular cast on, also known as an Italian cast on, uh, for both one by one rib and two by two rib. I hope this video and this technique helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.